Hey there. I just wanted to hop on and share a quick tip uh, in case anyone else comes across the same issue that I have here. What we have are one of these inexpensive uh, ZIF sockets from China. You know, zero insertion force. You put your chip or whatever part you've got in there and you don't have to push or pull, hence zero insertion force. They're handy uh, for situations where you're pulling things in and out. Usually you find these in you know, little chip programmers or in my case I've got a little component tester here that uses one of these sockets. Now, let's say you've had a problem and one of the pins is bent out of shape, isn't that making contact anymore or something's going really wrong. What are you going to do? Well, you could order one for a dollar or two from, you know, Newark or your supplier of choice there and wait three to five business days. <laughs> you, you could order one on eBay and wait for it to come from Shenzhen and, you know, that could take a month or so there. Or if you're really desperate and you need it that night, you can pull it apart and try and fix it. There's not a lot to the mechanism in these, uh, but they are a pain to get back together, and that's what I wanted to share with you here. So, we're going to do what we shouldn't do. You always want to try and fix this while it's still together, but let's say it, it's bad enough, or you made a mistake, and you pull it apart. All right. We have our little lever arm, a little spring clip that sits here. Oh, if we'll focus, yep. A little spring clip. We've got the top plate, which has little uh, key pins to register with the bottom plate. That's where all the pins sit. And in between is our sliding plate, which actually puts the pressure on all of these little fingers to close them up. So you've got it apart. You've taken your tweezers or your pliers and you found your your finger that's giving you trouble. You've tweaked it back into place so it'll actually make contact when you put a chip or a part in there. Now how are you going to get this plate back on? You can see there this is a a 14 pin socket here which means <laughs> we've got 28 uh, little fingers here to try and line up and slide into this top plate. It's not really going to happen there. It's just not going to line up. Because every one of these fingers is under tension and is going to try and hop into the slot next to it. Didn't work out for me, so I want to show you how I got around that. First off, you got to make sure that all of your pins are clear. You know, no solder blobs or anything else left on them. So it'll pass through this bottom half of the body. And you pull them all out. Out they come. Now, there is a direction to them. I'm not sure if it matters which direction they go back in. But there is a, a wider and a narrower finger there. So the way to get these back together... ...is in reverse. You take and you hold the finger together, and you set it into the top plate. And of course it's a little bit awkward for me <laughs> since I'm working from behind the camera here. There we go. And repeat. Nope. <laughs> so let me get all 14 of these fingers back in place here, and we will be right back. All right, so I've got all 14 of those fingers put back in. They're mostly lined up there. We want to keep them in a row and fairly evenly spaced. That way we don't have to fight them while trying to get them in. This one just doesn't want to quite hang where it should. We'll have to work around that. But now that we've got them all setting in the top plate there, and they are just barely held in there, I'm going to go ahead and put our middle plate, our sliding plate, on top. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on the back to make sure nothing moves. So now we've got them all captured there. Again, this one just doesn't want to quite sit where it should. <laughs> all right, and I'm going to slide on the uh, the back plate there. Get the direction right. All right. And yes, that one just doesn't want to behave. I'm going to hold down the sliding plate and try to reset that. There we go. 
So all of our pins have started in. Everything is still held together. Now we need to slip in our last two parts there. I'm going to try and capture this without letting the whole thing fall apart. All right. So I've set the spring plate in. I'm going to set the arm in. The arm's not too critical at this point until we really clamp everything down. And press it together. All right. So that is looking pretty good. Now before we lose it all, let's get the screws back in. Make sure the spring plate hasn't slipped up over top of the ledge there. Get our last screw in. There we go. So it can be done. You know, these can be put back together. It's uh, a little bit fiddly, <laughs> uh, especially if you were dealing with more pins than what I've got here. Uh, but if it's something you really have to do, you can get it done. Wouldn't recommend it. You know, your time is probably better off spent replacing this with a new socket. Something with nice, fresh, stiff pins there. Uh, which is what I ended up doing after, you know, working around this. Of course, I wore out the first three pins because that's where I was always putting in uh, three-pin components. And that's where I was always putting in my little jumper leads that I use. Which is why I move those over to a separate connector. That way I won't put as much wear on that. Won't have to replace this as quickly. But yeah, that will get you by. While you wait on <laughs> a new one from eBay to come. And while you're at it, order yourself a spare so you don't have to go through that again. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you next time.